Okay, so now it's time to get into the sequel. That's right, kids. It is Code 8 Part 2, which has now dropped on Netflix. It is once again directed by Jeff Chan, who this time he co-wrote the film with Chris Pear and Sharon Lee, Jesse Levercom, with some help from Tom Selinau. The film is produced by Robbie and Stephen Amell, Jeff Chan, Stephen Hoban, Matthew Karasamari, and Chris Pear. It is executive produced by Mark Smith, Wade Odlum, Brian Heinemf, Nate Bolletin, Aaron Barnett. It is co-produced by Michael Heathcote, Amanda Pileggi, and Tom Selinau. It is co-executive produced by Brendan McNeil, Liani and Cynthia Goodidry, Joanna Cuffup. Um, it's associate produced by Andy Chung, Michael Davison. Do, 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 and Paul Skinner. So Ryan Tabert handles the music again. Marie David Gon was on cinematography. Matt Lynn edits the piece. Stephanie Gorin handled the casting. Kai Badell does the production design. Art direction is Andrea Kristoff. Set decoration is Patricia Kukia. Marcia Scott was on costume design. Hair, makeup, and effects. We got Sarah Bergman, Heather Calvert, Erica Croft, and Tanette Julian. Elizabeth McAllister, Rita Pacito, Christopher Pizzarelli, Lucas Press, Linda Preston, Liz Rowe, Alexis Tatatrin. Mark Wooten, the car. So returning for this sequel, right, we've got Robbie Amell as Connor, Stephen Amell as Garrett, right? Officer Kingston is now Sergeant Kingston, played by Alex Malari Jr. Um, we've also got Detective Davis back, played by Aaron Abrams. And yeah, I think that's all the returnings. So we got um Kingston's wife, Stephanie, played by Sarina Palmer. Um we've got Pavani, right, played by Sierra Gola. Galamgus, right? A younger version of Pavani is played by Mikalaya Swaminathan, right? Mm, I feel I've, I, I've said that right. Her brother Marcus is played by, oh, huh, is actually played by um, Serena's actual brother, right? Norin Galagamgus. Right, uh, we have got doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, Maeve, played by Natalie Leconetti. Shane, played by Akili Julianne. Uh, Officer Sorelli, played by Mo Jedi Lamour. Uh, 
do, 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 do. Nadine, played by Naveki Elliott. Um, yeah, I think, I'm not sure if she's a reporter again in this one. Tarak, played by Sammy Azero. Um, Mina, played by Jean Jung. Officer Stillman, played by Altar Vincent. Um, Tamira, played by Jessica Allen. June, played by Jane Moffat. Camille, played by Sunni McFadden. Uh, yeah. Um, Pavani's mum, actually, is played by Yazimi. Yazimin Kamisi, right? A younger version of Tarek is played by Yarif Bat. Um, yeah, that is our main cast, I would say. So the gist of this is after witnessing the murder of her brother and the subsequent cover-up, a teenage girl with abnormal abilities seeks the help of an ex-con and his former partner in crime together they face a unit of corrupt police officers who deeply ad who deploy advanced robotic technology to prevent themselves from being exposed oi man these synopsises are pretty bad a lot of the time because you know I would say that um, Paveen actually sought help with Mina, right, who and the youth um, hostel, right? It's just the fact that Connor is the janitor there. He works there, so Mina enlists him to help her, right? And Garrett... He comes into it just from his prior association with Connor. Like, Paveen doesn't seek, necessarily go out seeking their help, you know? It's an odd one. It's an odd one. But, okay, so we get this sequel. You know, we start off and Connor is released from jail. All right. Garrett goes to pick him up and Connor doesn't want to know. Tells him to fuck off. Right? We then jump five years later. I think it's five years, not five months. Yeah, I think it's five years. Anyway, right, the, the whole... It is odd, this one, because right, from the gate, the, the attitude of Connor, it was like at the end of the first film where he, Connor's, like, blaming Garrett for everything, but Connor wasn't forced to do anything that he, he did, right? He knowingly wanted the money, so did the illegal shit. You know what I mean? No one was just like, oh, you must do that. Like, he chose to do it, right? And so... He's then blaming Garrett, being like, you're selfish, you're doing this for you. And it's just like, yeah, but so was Connor. <laughs> right? That, I think mean, that's the big thing. And it, it never really gets brought up in the film. You know, Garrett is not, never he's like, wait, you did the same shit for the same reasons. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, it's, 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 Odd in that regard. Very odd in that regard. Right? We, well, you know, I think we don't get, like, Officer Park isn't around. So Davis references Park and references that something happened to him, but that's all off camp. We don't see any of that, which is a little odd. You know, like have a flat or something just to show what a certain person is willing to do for their shit. You know what I mean? I feel that would have helped with that. But 
it, it's the it's this whole story again of these powers, right? These powers. Now we've got a couple of people. So we've got um Pavin and her brother, all right, her brother Marcus. Now what Marcus, what we see Marcus do at the start of this doesn't necessarily make sense because he works with it. Like, he knows what could happen. And so, but there's no, like, contingency or anything. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But then again, it's a bit like Connor joining the gang in the first film. And then you've, we've got Pavini, the Pavini, who has got these powers, but, like, we don't really know what her power is. And then it's this kind of thing where she's asked to do this thing or well she's not she says i'll do this thing but with no past experience of doing anything along those lines so it's like wait out of the blue we're meant to believe that this person who is a young girl right a young girl with no previous experience can then do this thing it is kind of baffling, right? It, it's all kind of, there's a load of plans that have been put into play that on paper, you're just like, okay, what? Why would you, why? Like, why? Like the whole house thing, right? The union reps in the house. You're just like, wait, that's the plan what like surely there's so many other things that you could have done and you went with that that's very odd that's very odd then we see what poison does at the start of the film later in the film we're not getting the same effects right we we have dire things done to characters without any real consequence, which uh, it's just not, doesn't really deliver on the, the jeopardy of the situation, right? And the, the, Although Connor doesn't seem to grunt and make weird noises using his power in this one, the way the power is depicted, it doesn't look as good. Like the the whole lightning kind of thing looked very superimposed. Like in the first one, I thought the use of powers looked better. In this one, it's not as good. It's not as good, right? I think as a follow-up, right, as a follow-up to the 2019 film, it it's not necessarily the strongest of stories, you know, for me. For me, it's not necessarily the strongest of story. But there's so many other things, right, in this kind of world that was perplexing, was intriguing. Like the whole drug, right? Just that. What's that about? Like, how are they trying to stop it? There's all these other things which go nowhere. We don't get, they don't get touched upon. It could have been more on the whole power vacuum left from the first film, right? There's these these whole things, like the, the whole Guardian thing, 
right? Because suddenly we got dogs, but not too much on the guardians. Like we're told there's no more guardians, but then we see guardians. So there's all these different things, and 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 this, yeah, the film is is I don't know. You wanna go? You feel like it was kind of when I say rushed, I mean. Like the pressure is on because Netflix optioned a sequel after the first one. So the first one they funded through Indiegogo and other means. So now they've got Netflix money, right? Now, maybe Netflix didn't give them up, you know, that big, big budget money, but they got money. But they may have been like, we want this in production by this day. Right? So to say, I don't mean when I say it felt rushed. But maybe an idea, they came up with an initial idea. I'm mean, like, yeah, let's just go with that, right? Rather than ruminating on it and being like, actually, we could go even better. We could push this in this direction. I don't know. That's what it felt. But I didn't love the first film, right? I think if you love that first film, Stuff like Skyline, I think Code 8 Part 2 will work for you. You know? Like, some of the performances are pretty good. Like, Kingston, I think that performance is very good. You know? Some of these are very good. But another a weirdness of it. So, in the first film, right, when you think about it, um... Garrett, right? He's 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 too kind of uh what would you call it? Not henchmen, um, but let's say colleagues, he's two colleagues, right? You've got the the deaf black guy, and then you've got the girl. In this one, he's basically got doppelgangers. <laughs> Of those characters, different names and everything, and the black guy in this one can talk, but it's basically duplicates. And they, you know, their demise is pretty much in a similar fashion. And again, two more characters that aren't fleshed out. It's very peculiar. So it's a weird choice but it, it that that really signifies a lot of the weird choices made in this film for me but as i said look if you really enjoyed the first code 8 you like films like skyline then i think you will enjoy part 2 it is now streaming on netflix so go have it